and welcome to another DIY all about crayons. National Crayon Day was last Friday, so I'm only a week behind. I didn't even know that the day existed. I've done my fair share of crayon related projects over the years. I will list those all below in a playlist, so you can click the link if you're interested in seeing those. Also, if you're not yet caught up on all my most recent videos, I will link my water candle and DIY scratch art below. If you want to be sure that you never miss a new video from this channel, please join the family by clicking the red subscribe button below and also the bell icon. You can also show your support by giving this video a thumbs up and what that really is going to do is help this video get spread around YouTube and get recommended to more viewers. Now without further ado, let's get on into the crayon craft. Of course to make a crayon stained glass window you're gonna need some crayons. You do not need this many by any means. I only used five but I didn't know at first how many colors I was going to do and how many it would take, so I'm showing you my massive, crazy, crayon hoarded collection. <laughs> They're just really pretty and I use them for a lot of projects, so why not? I'm sure a lot of you have heard the news that Crayola has decided to retire Dandelion from its 24 pack and I think overall just retire it in general and never make another Dandelion colored crayon again. I for one do not like this decision, I think that they should have taken away green yellow which looks exactly exactly like yellow in my opinion. Let me know in the comments section below which crayon you would have wanted to get the boot instead of dandelion or if you really don't like dandelion let me know that too. By the way this video is not sponsored by Crayola whatsoever. Never have been sponsored by them actually but it's one of my YouTube career goals so Crayola if you are watching this hint hint. The first thing you're going to do is remove the paper wrappers from your crayons. And I'm not sure if I'm just really terrible at peeling these or if the glue has gotten stronger over the years, but I don't think it's very easy to peel the entire wrapper off of a crayon. It takes forever. Maybe it's a problem with having kind of long nails. Maybe I'm just terrible at it, but I find that trying to peel a dry wrapper completely off a crayon is really frustrating. It takes a long time. It gets crayon wax under your nails and it's just no fun. I've included the struggle of me trying to peel these wrappers off for your reference, by the way. Also, I did try the freezing method, which a lot of you have recommended to me in the past. That did not work out for me. I don't know if I did something wrong. I left them in for a few hours, but the freezer seemed to have no effect on how easily the paper could be removed. It was the same exact as a normal crayon, so I don't know. A way to make crayon peeling like 10 times easier, in my opinion, is to dunk them in water. I like to use warm water. I don't think it really matters, but I'm just taking all the crayons I was planning on using and I submerged them underwater and I left them there for a few minutes. After maybe five minutes, I did another demonstration and it's still kind of a pain to peel, but way, way, way better. I at least could get the wrapper off this time instead of just little tiny pieces of it and stopping. The real magic happens when you leave them in for a longer amount of time. So 20 minutes, an hour, even overnight if you plan ahead and leave the crayons in the water overnight. It's not gonna do anything to the wax, so don't worry about how long you leave them in. But you can see that the longer they're in, the easier it is for the crayon wrappers to peel off and some of the papers are actually detaching on their own, which is great. It seems like when it comes to Crayola crayons at least, and especially the newer ones, all glue is not created equal, so different colors and different batches. Some will be really easy to peel and some will be not as easy, but still the water will help. And if you don't want to bother with the water at all, you can do this method that I think is actually the easiest, but it is also kind of dangerous, so if you're doing this with young children, definitely supervise or do it for them. An X-Acto knife is very, very sharp and even even when you're the most experienced crafter or DIYer in the world, you can still cut yourself and it will hurt very badly. So be careful when doing this one if you choose the X-Acto knife method. I know I talked a lot about crayon peeling and some of you might be extremely bored by it, but it's very important. Once you have your crayons peeled, and by the way, you don't need this many as I mentioned, unless you're doing a giant group project or you're going to make tons and tons of art pieces, you don't need this many. I used five, like I said, but with all the paper, be sure to recycle it if you have recycling in your area. 
Now it's time to shred the crayons into little tiny pieces. I find the easiest way to do this is by using a pencil sharpener. Not a crayon sharpener, but a pencil sharpener. If you're doing this with a ton of people, it's gonna make it go by so much more quickly. You can probably get an entire pack of really cheap pencil sharpeners from the dollar store. Basically, all you're going to do is sharpen the crayon until you can't sharpen it anymore or until you get enough shavings in your opinion. I like to do just about the entire crayon. An alternative method to getting crayon shavings is to use a cheese grater. Now I thought that this was going to be my method of choice at the beginning and I didn't think that I was going to even try the pencil sharpening method, but I was completely wrong. The cheese grater makes everything so much more messy and my hand started hurting after about half a crayon, so there's that. But if you do want to do this, you think it's more fun, put a piece of paper or index card underneath and just grate away. This, like the X-Acto blade, is going to be a little bit more dangerous, so keep that in mind. You might even want to do a combination of the cheese grater and pencil sharpener because you do get different sizes and thicknesses of the crayon shavings. I'm using little tiny Dixie cups to store the crayon shavings. If it starts to overflow, push the shavings down and crack them up a little bit tinier with a toothpick or a wooden dowel and then you'll make a lot more room in the cup and you can keep sharpening and adding more. After you have crayon slivers from all the colors of your choosing, go ahead and grab some wax paper. Make sure that it's white and not a natural colored one because I have heard that there is a brown one, so you don't want that. I tore off a rather long piece of wax paper and then I cut it in half so there's two pieces. Now grab one little Dixie cup or whatever container you're using of crayon shavings and you're going to just kind of drizzle them onto the wax paper like this. I find it's easiest to use some sort of tool for this, such as a bamboo skewer, so they don't stick all over your skin and no static happens. By the way, my house is very dry, so also with the cheese grater, a lot of static was happening, so that was not fun either. Use as many colors as you want and sprinkle them around as randomly as you want, or you can even create a pattern such as ombre or rainbow. I'm just doing yellow, orange, and pink for this first one, and I spread them kind of far apart with some areas that are more concentrated than others. Once that sheet is set up the way you want it to be, put the other blank piece on top and grab your iron. This was the very first time that I'd ever tried this project, so I had my iron up to a fairly high setting, and also I didn't put anything on top of the wax paper, which I do advise, because it burns or melts, I mean it doesn't burn, no. It melts very, very quickly this way, and it might leave a little bit of waxy residue on the actual iron, so you probably want to do what I'm doing later where I put a paper towel over it. Once I melted all the crayon, I took an insert from a clear picture frame that I got from Michael's Craft Store. I put that on top and I taped it down with clear tape. The reason that I'm taping it down instead of tracing the shape onto the wax paper is because I am very, very bad at cutting straight lines. I know that sounds strange for someone who has a DIY channel and who has been doing crafts and artsy things for many, many years, but I will tell you I'm very bad at measuring and I'm very bad at cutting straight. So leaving the piece of paper on there allows me to have more of a guide and I can rest the scissors along the edge as I cut. Life hack for people who are bad at cutting straight. Once that's cut out, slide it into the picture frame of your choosing or don't even use a picture frame. You can just hang it up on the window or wherever you want in your house. You definitely want some light going through so you probably don't want to put it on the wall, but you can. You can display it on top of a bookshelf or dresser like I have done here. Next, I'm trying out this other method where I color a shape onto the one side of wax paper. I used black crayon to make a heart as you can see, obviously. Then I already had some crayon shavings on the other half and I put the heart face down so the crayon wax is touching the crayon shavings. And iron on top. And again, I didn't use paper towel on top this time, but I probably should have. It doesn't 
really matter you can choose but i don't want any of you to accidentally ruin your iron or anything so definitely be safe and put something on top if you're worried about that i think it turned out pretty cool so this is definitely another design method that you guys can try if you want to do something different and i found this little mini easel picture frame i think it's kind of cute finally i'm showing you a more traditional stained glass window style picture or artwork piece. I don't know where I was going with that. You can see exactly what I did. I sectioned off the different colors of crayons into kind of geometric shapes. I'm working on the pink right now and using the dowel to help me move the crayon shavings around. Very self-explanatory. Here's what it looks like after I have mapped out my design and I'm putting the wax paper on top like this and putting a paper towel on top of that. It's up to you if you want to use a high or low setting. It will just determine how quickly it melts and how much the crayon wax will bleed and kind of flow around inside the wax paper. If you're aiming for more precise lines, be sure to do this very slowly and lift up the paper towel often to check your results because it's easy to hold the iron on an area for too long and then the crayon will melt together and spread more than you want it but I think it looks pretty cool I was just trying to make sure that they kind of stayed the shape that they were applied now I've completed the ironing process and the artwork is revealed here I'm just holding it up to a light to see if there's any other areas that I want to iron a bit more so I did a few touch-ups with the iron and then I took it out to the living room and put it in front of the window like a true stained glass window here I think it looks so cool and it's really interesting to see how the different types of shavings because the pink ones were made with the cheese grater well some of them it's kind of cool to see that those have created different patterns than the ribbon type from the sharpener and if you really want a traditional stained glass window appearance then go ahead and draw black lines around your shapes i used a sharpie marker for this you could also use black puffy paint. Here's what it looks like now with the sharpie lines drawn on and I was hoping that the day I filmed this would be a bright sunshiny day but no. Ohio would not allow for that apparently. We got snow last night and it stuck to the ground and it's literally freezing here right now. I'm the kind of person who likes snow for a couple weeks and then I'm ready for summer and I wish that summer was like 10 months out of the year instead of four. I don't know, I might be exaggerating, but but hey, even though another name for this is a sun catcher, it still looks very pretty on snowy days, as you can see. If you enjoy DIYs and artsy crafty videos, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As I mentioned, I do enjoy putting out crayon videos every once in a while, and I do a Wreck This Journal series every Sunday. The final question that I want to ask you guys is, do you like this better with the black lines or without them? I'll let you in on a little secret, this is actually an overlay, so I have the option to use it either way. After creating my third art piece, here's the amount of wax I had left over, so there's definitely plenty more for at least another piece or two. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for the new Breakfast Journal video on Sunday. I'm always so excited for those, but I also still enjoy DIYing. That's why we have two videos a week here. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye. <clears throat> My voice just totally, randomly, kind of went out. It's back. Okay.